What's up guys? If you clicked on this video, then odds are you're probably not outside like I am right now, getting ready to enjoy this beautiful sunshine and go shoot your bow. You're probably looking at a rest that's not on a bow, maybe a little intimidated and trying to figure out how the hell does this go on there? Or maybe you're just preparing to install a dropway rest, or maybe you even know what you're doing, you just want to see how I do it. Well, don't worry, I got you covered. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to go from a rest in a box all the way to a rest that's on a bow functioning properly and dropping away just perfectly. So today, let's talk about how I install a drop away rest. Alright, so I vividly remember many years ago when I was first getting into tuning bows, I literally was so intimidated with a drop away rest that I ran a limb driven rest. Now there are plenty of debates between a limb driven rest versus a cable activated rest and I've shot plenty of bows obviously with a limb driven rest, they work great, but I really prefer a cable activated drop away rest. I like being able to lock my arrow up into the upward position and I also like how short that string is on the rest as opposed to having a string go all the way down to the bottom limb or top limb for that limb activation. Personally, I tend to be a little bit of a worry wart and I was just a little concerned about how that much string might get caught by something or just prevent the rest from dropping appropriately. So a couple years ago I switched back over to cable activated drop away rests and have been really happy with them. I've used the QADs, the HHAs, and the AAEs all with great success. Uh, but this video goes over me installing an HHA rest. One of the features I really like on the HHA rest is the fact that on the rest side of the cable, you can loosen a set screw and pull it through to really fine tune the rest's drop timing. That for me is super cool. I also really like how well built they are. I love the internals of them, uh, just the fact that they're just built to last for years. So let's get into how to install a drop away rest. Now the first thing that I like to do is I take everything out of the package and I lay it out in front of me on my table or workbench or wherever I'm installing it. This for me just helps me know exactly where parts are and just kind of stay organized. You can do this or you don't if you don't want to, but frankly, I like to be organized and have everything laid out in front of me. So now you put the rest on the bow. Fortunately, this particular rest has a bow specific mount. So it's flush against the riser and I don't have to worry about leveling the rest. But let's just assume that you have a rest that does not have a bow specific mount. So in the event that you just had a standard generic mount on there, what you would do is you would get the bow perfectly vertical and plumb, so that's on, on both axes, the bow is vertical in your bow vise. Then I put the rest on, screw it in, and I put a level on that mounting bracket just to make sure that the rest is perfectly level. Now, after you verify that that's level, tighten it down and keep your hand on it while you're tightening. It's very common for that rest to want to move with that head while you're tightening down the Allen wrench. So get it super tight and make sure that it's absolutely perfectly level. Now that you've verified that, you're gonna make sure that the arrow itself is running perfectly level and it's running where you want it through the burger hole. Now if you have questions about where you wanna run your arrow through the burger hole, you can check out the tuning videos that I've done in the past that goes into more detail of it. But I personally, for most intensive purposes I like to run the bottom of the arrow through the dead center of the burger hole. So I'm going to make that rest now go up and down until I have the bottom of the arrow running dead level through the center of the burger hole. I have bubbles on the, on the arrow itself and I'm making sure that it's perfectly level. Once I have the arrow where I want it, I'm going to make sure that if the bow has a D-loop on it or knocking points already, that they're in the right spot. Now that the arrow is exactly where you want it, you know it's level and it's running through the proper part of the burger hole, it's time to time the rest. I'll start by taking the drop away activation cord and run it through the downward cable and I like to start about an inch below the bottom of the grip. No matter what bow I'm tuning, whether it be a Bowtech, Elite, Matthews, Hoyt, Parker, rest in peace, I found that an inch below the bottom of the grip works perfectly. 
take the bow out and draw it. Once you've drawn the bow, or put it in a draw board, whatever, make sure that that rest is coming up right in the last inch to three quarters of an inch of the draw cycle. Personally, I prefer to be on that dead on inch. So as soon as that draw cycle is in that last inch of the draw, you want the rest to come up fully. On a rest that isn't the HHA rest, you're then going to pull that cord back just a smidge, tie a knot in it, cut the excess off, burn it, and serve above it. For the HHA rest, I do it a little differently. Instead of having that activation cord pull through the downward string, I'm able to tie a knot and serve already an inch below my grip. I then take the set screw that's on the rest and leave it loose, draw the bow, or put it in a draw board, and get it right to where I want it to come up, tighten my set screw down, and I'm done. That's one of the beauties about the HHA rest that I prefer is strictly because you can super, super, super fine tune it. The last step that I do is after I'm done tuning the bow and I know that the rest is perfect, the cord location's perfect, the bow is shooting perfect, I take a pencil and I mark every single spot on that rest that could potentially move has the ability to be adjusted. This way, if I smash my bow into something or something happens, whatever, I'm able to rapidly verify that everything is perfect. This actually saved my butt a couple minutes before a hunt earlier this past year where my bow started shooting weird and I was able to look down right away and see that my drop cord had moved a little bit, causing the rest to be untimed. So definitely a good idea to mark everything on there. I use a pencil for all the metal parts of the rest. I take a Sharpie and just mark right below the knot on on the activation cord just so I know if it moves at all. Hopefully that's helpful. I told you it's easy. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it or found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave it below. As always, please subscribe and stay tuned for tons more information, content, and fun vlogs from the Burbs. What up? You're interrupting a YouTube video. Say what? I was filming a YouTube video on how to install an arrow rest. I just screwed it up. Way to go, loser. <laughs> I hope you're still filming. I am actually.